Hello and uh, welcome to this lecture on computer architecture. So in this lecture we'll uh, discuss about what is called the iron law in the field of computer architecture. So this will be one on one on uh, performance aspect related to computer architecture. So when we say performance, the first thing that comes to our mind is time. How much time it takes to finish a task, right? It can be your program or if you are transferring something from one machine to another machine. So in case of uh, processor, it is the instructions per program and then how quickly uh, the processor can uh, execute those instructions, right? So if we uh, look at, at a 10,000 feet view, the runtime or the execution time of a program will be divided into like three sub parts, right? So one is number of instructions per program that is driven by the source code, the compiler and the ISA. And how many cycles it takes per instruction, right? Different instruction can uh, take uh, different amounts of uh, time. But, but so far we have discussed about a single cycle design, single cycle CPU. And then finally, what's the relationship between the time and cycle? Your, your cycle can be a four, uh, for a four gigahertz machine, one cycle can be a 0.25 nanoseconds, right? So how does it translate to your notion of time, right? That, that you can perceive, that humans can perceive, right? So if you look at uh, the first part or the first sub part, that is kind of driven by uh, when you write your program and what compiler opti optimizations are uh, performed. But but the main uh, key uh, that defines the time per program is the cycles for instruction, the middle one. Because this is kind of constant once you fix your processor frequency. This is kind of once you have generated your binary, this is kind of done. So this is the middle ground where you can actually uh, try to improve your uh, performance by coming up with micro architectural ideas. So if I look at in, in uh, detail for, for each instructions, then what will happen instead of just saying instructions for program, we can just say instruction count. And uh, we have different kinds of instructions that you have seen like jumps, loads, arithmetic instructions, right? For each instructions, uh, we can actually have the count and we can also find out their cycle per instruction, right? And anyway, this is the constant that I have been talking about. This is time per cycle. So eventually we are trying to optimize this particular term, the cycle per instruction. Because instruction count is again, it's already generated by your compiler. The processor is just executing them. Okay. So let, to understand uh, the notion of uh, runtime and what exactly we mean when we say we should improve the CPU or the cycle per instruction. So let's take an example. So let's take a hypothetical example. Let's have a program P which has, let's say, 1 billion instructions. Okay, so this is pretty small number. Your actual programs will have uh, hundreds or thousands of billions of instructions. Okay. Let's assume the processor takes one cycle per instruction, right? Uh, so the CPI is 1. And the processor clock is 1 gigahertz. Right? That means uh, your clock cycle is actually 1 nanosecond. Right. So if I look at uh, the CPU time to execute this 1 million instructions, so this is my instructions per, pro, uh, per program. This is cycle per instruction. And this is time per cycle. Right. So finally, uh, if I multiply all these three, I get one second. So that means uh, to execute a program that has 1 billion instructions, it will take one second. Okay. Let's change that a bit and make the processor clock four gigahertz. Okay, without changing the cycle per instruction. It is still taking one cycle per instruction. Okay, so that is completely unaffected. 
we will see how to improve it but for the timing we are just playing with the other two parameters this one and this one and then let's see what is happening right so now processor clock has become four gigahertz that means it's four times faster right so previously uh cycle time was one nanosecond now it has become 0.25 nanosecond so the overall cpu time has become 0.25 second which is four times faster now let's change uh, a bit let's assume the processor can execute 10 instructions in one cycle right that means uh, the cycle per instruction is actually 0 0.10 right because in one cycle you can uh, process 10 instruction so cycle it takes for one instruction is 0 0.10 cycle right instructions are same uh, billion clock cycle is 4 gigahertz so that is 0.25 nanoseconds right so if you look at the previous slide it was 0 0.25 now uh, 0.25 second now we have improved to 0 0.025 right it's even faster it's 40x faster compared to the baseline that we have started right what has changed this hasn't changed cycle time is constant number of instructions remain the same but now suddenly the processor if we can build a processor that can process or execute 10 instructions in one cycle then uh, we will be able to finish 1 billion instructions in um, 0 0.025 second okay let's try one more thing let's try to understand the role of compiler or programmer so let's say tomorrow you have a uh, new compiler, new set of compiler optimizations, and suddenly that program generates only 1 million instructions instead of 1 billion, right? So that 10 to the power 9, as it has now become 10 to the power 6, 1 million instructions. And now, if I uh, have a even slow uh, processor or processor that uh, processes only one instruction at a time, one instruction per cycle, instead of uh, you know 0 0.10. Uh, as mentioned in the previous uh, slide and uh, my processor clock let's say remains the same 4 gigahertz right i am now able to get a 4000x speed up it's because my compiler has done an awesome job right instead of generating a billion uh, instruction it has just generated uh, 1 million instructions right so as you can see all these sub parts are uh, Though they, they are kind of independent, driven by different factors. Uh, when you multiply all these three, uh, you can see the combined uh, effect in your final uh, CPU time. So if I want to uh, get deeper, maybe you can try this uh, on your own. So let's say a program uh, P has 10 billion instructions in total, out of which 2 billion uh, branches 3 billion loads 1 billion stores so we are done with the 6 billion and then rest 4 billion are all arithmetic instructions okay and each of them have their different cpis 4 2 3 and 1 uh, assuming the clock rate is 4 gigahertz what will be the final execution time so pretty straightforward uh, this is the clock time that is 0.25 nanosecond you have to multiply the instruction count with the cpi uh, for each of these instructions and then finally multiply by 0.25 nanosecond that will give you the final execution time so let's let's try to understand another uh, subtle aspect here so let's say tomorrow you uh, go to, go to your favorite uh, electronic shop and you want to buy a processor right and there are two options let's say there is a company called intel and there is a company called a and d and uh, these are the specs of uh, those two processors right so one is taking more time the cycle per instruction is two right so for each instruction it's taking two cycle but the a and d processor is good it's actually taking one cycle per instruction so it's uh, better right but if you compare the clock rate this is faster it's a two gigahertz processor which means the clocks uh, clock cycle time is uh, 0.5 nanosecond whereas for a and d the clock cycle time is one nanosecond so now 
assuming the role of compiler is and everything the same the first sub part that we have discussed in the iron law which machine will you prefer right so as obvious and it's pretty intuitive you can see that both the machines are providing uh, a performance of one nanoseconds for instruction right so the key here is uh, if some some processor is claiming high frequency that doesn't mean it will provide a high performance you have to look at both frequencies and the cpi uh, assuming rest of the things are the same that that are not in our control so as an architect you have to look at the cycle for instruction along with the frequency to decide uh, which processor is doing good okay with that i will stop thank you